I started flying, the first gyros looked like this. Well, then came the auto gyro, which looks like this. Now they have heading lock gyros that look like this. And they even have gyros that look like this. Happy New Year, folks. For those who follow my channel, you know I've had quite a lot of experience with the Durafly Auto Gyro since getting it. If you've not yet seen how this machine flies for me, check my homepage and you're going to see the review and also the night flights. Well, today we're going to talk about strength, the ability to handle high winds, and other interesting tips and mods. Well, after breaking the blade holder, the spare blade holder, and blades on our heavy winds up here, I decided to go ahead and make my own blades and blade holders. This I did while I was waiting for the parts which were back ordered. I figured the strongest way to make blades that would work pretty good, and they do, was to use Ace Hardware Wood Yardsticks. I shaved and sanded them to be as close to the simple Clark Y airfoil, but they actually wound up more like the Night Flyer YY. <laughs> Well, I also went ahead and ordered another complete kit as it was faster to get than wait for the back ordered parts. But this time when I built it, I beefed up my head, the blades, and I decided to show you how I did that. These pictures should give you an idea of what I did. I used lids, I used gears, I used tail rotor gears, <laughs> lots of things. Well, since the main blade is using the maple seed effect and not power driven, there's really no torque issues, and with a 2 degree negative pitch, just about anything will work for making the blades. So, beefing up my head with the lids, I present some extreme cold flying with heavy wind to show you how it handles it. You know, auto gyros are pretty interesting machines, and just like all aircraft, to be a good pilot, it is absolutely imperative to know how and why it flies. It's also imperative to know which stick to move to achieve flight under any circumstances. Also, never give up in flight and crash. You fly till you die. Well, that said, the auto gyros work on the same principle as the maple tree seeds. And as you see, they have quite impressively grown wings that gently allow the seed to drop to the ground and basically an auto rotate mode. Well, as the blade spins, or seed spins, it slows the seed with a bit of updraft. If a slight breeze is blowing, the seed can really fly quite far. Well, the auto gyro is basically three maple seeds with two degrees negative pitch. You know, moving forward causes the blade to spin, thus creating lift. The blades spin counterclockwise and have a slight more amount of lift on the right side of the plane, and the blades on the left side of the plane are actually being blown and that gives the speed to drive the blades. So it actually balances but most counterclockwise auto gyros tend to want to fly to the left with low rotor speeds. Thus the rudder is very important control that needs to be used a lot in conjunction with the rotor cyclic which only goes left and right. It all works pretty well and auto gyros can do some really nice auto rotates. In the wind, however, it's challenging as the rotor spins quite fast, thus to creating lots of lift. Tipping or tilting the rotor blade too far up in flight is like trying to hold a trash can lid down in the wind. There's a couple things I want to point out. You will break this. This is a uh, pretty weak link, but I think they're doing that so you don't break blades. They do give you a spare one of these. You will break it, but I did break this too. Take a piece the same size length and coat the end of your wingtips and put that on each wingtip. This will definitely protect that. And the next thing that I did using my lids again. This time I took the lid and I've cut notches on the side. So what I've done is just simply taken this lid and cut that out so this fits on here. And I'm going to take some uh, amazing goop and I'm going to put a drop on each end here and tighten that down. That's going to stiffen this all up in here and still be able to fix it to replace anything. Made the hole big enough on this side so that'll fit right down into the center and centerize that. Okay. And to fill the spacing I'm just amazing gooping uh, this on there, that's exactly the right size. So when I put this on top of here, that'll tighten down and it doesn't change your coning angle too much on the blades. You got a nice handle to stop the blades and also a good way to give it a quick little spin. And it definitely beefs it up. 
Another thing that I know you're going to break, I did, is the servos. They break real easy, so I'm replacing them with the Turnigy's uh, metal gears. Nice servos. And I'm going to paint this unfinished part here. Looks kind of tacky. Here's another thing. There was too much slop in, in here for me. I don't like all that much slop. So I'm going to put this little wash in here. And I wanted to tell you, it, you can replace this as a case-hardened bolt, but you can go right down to the hardware store and get a three millimeter bolt. They're not as strong. They'll bend easier, but uh, uh, they're fast to get. This is the right amount of space, just a tiny bit there. There was uh, over a sixteenth of an inch, and uh, I like a little smoother, so that'll be better. Okay, here's another little tip that maybe you don't know. If you ever get overspray on something, like I just did on this decal and on this engine, all you have to do is use a little glue gun. I mean, this stuff is amazing. It takes a paint over spray right off of everything uh, without hurting it, and especially uh, decals. And uh, by the way, you put a little hole like that in there, that one you, you know, won't spill all over the place. Right? I, mean, I don't know if you can see this or not. How I'm going to take that, all that paint over spray right off there. No problem. I'm going to point out quickly, in order to put this landing gear in, you have to unplug these wires, put the landing gear in, and then plug it back in. So don't try to stick this in until you do that, because the speed controller is already plugged in. The last thing I always do is I put uh, the reflective 100 mile an hour race tape on there. That's uh, orange duct tape, and it makes it a lot easier for me to see. You know, if there's no wind blowing and you're having trouble getting your rotor to spin up, I made a little thing you can make out of the spool. This is out of foam rubber, and I put a notch up here, and all I do is I took a rope, small rope, and I make it like this, and all I do is simply lay this in here like this, bring this around, and pull that pretty tight against the rubber, and then just wrap this around like this until you got about five turns on it, grab the plane down here, and give it a yank and you're spinning up pretty nice. Well, that's a little bit cross. Gusty, it's gusty winds right now, so it's not just a steady wind. Good enough landing for the conditions we got. <laughs> oh god. We're gonna have to wait for the wind to go down. There, that's thinking. <laughs> and I'm frozen. I am colder than hell. Thanks again, folks, and please stay tuned because you won't believe what's coming next.